oh, what's good, my fellow peasants? How you all doing? Final Fantasy VIII and Marvel Avengers Endgame pairs. What the hell is this video about? So, guys, I have barely slept. I mean, I am full hobo-lific peasant engaged. I mean, I've just woken up, slept on this side, clearly. This isn't sticking down at all. Um, I've had about three hours sleep because last night I went to watch the uh, midnight viewing at the cinema of Marvel Avengers Endgame. And man, before I even get into this video, I just want to say the film is incredible incredible and there will be spoilers in this uh, video for it i won't go too much into it i'm not diving too much um uh, but the main reason i'm doing this video is because this is one of those crazy coincidences guys i mean it's so uncanny that i had to come on and do this video because yesterday before i went to watch the film i was recording a video now this video came from a fellow peasant their name's Kudo, massive shout out to them, this is entirely their theory. But they sent me a theory on how they believe time works in FFA. And in fact, it's one of the best theories I've seen because it has so much explanation to some of the really crazy, bizarre ending elements of FFA. You know, it was ones that have spawned things like Squall is Dead theory and the whole thing's a dream and all kind of crazy theories like that but we've kind of had those theories especially the the uh, Renoa is ultimate we've had that theory actually shut down by Katase so I feel like there's more of a grounded explanation in the theory and this one on how time works really put it into place so here I am recording this video talking about world lines bootstrap paradoxes literally talking about time loops and alternate world lines and, and, and how that spawns and and how that works and what's the guy's name where was it let me find it uh, Igor Novikov's self-consistency principle uh, basically he was trying to address the idea of time travel uh, and paradoxes uh, so he is a Russian physicist Igor Novikov I think I've said that right. Uh, and he intended to solve the problem of paradoxes in time travel, whether it was theoretically permitted in certain solutions of general relativity that contain to what are known as closed time-like curves. Right, I'm not gonna go reading through the Wikipedia too much, but basically, here I am doing this video on FFA, and when I then go and watch this movie, which is catching on all the same points. I was having to explain to my friends the information I had just been recording that day to explain this movie. So I thought, damn, I'm just going to come out and cover it. Oh all right, so I'm diving in. So here's where the spoilers uh, for, for the movie start. So all the Avengers, they need to go back to the timelines where the uh, Infinity Stones were first or before they were collected by Thanos so that they can collect them and ultimately snap people back into existence. The problem with it is, is if they go back to the timelines and they interfere too much, they could screw up the world line. Although, not so much screw it up, but they can't change what happened back then. They, And if even if they do, and this was explained by um, the Doctor Strange chick. God, how do I not remember her name? <laughs> she explained how if she hands over the time stone, then it would cause a deviant world line and in that world line her, her universe her reality could go to utter garbage um but the, obviously the way they do that is that they wouldn't have to come back and return the stones to the timeline so that it doesn't screw it up the, the whole idea because of course scientists all of it is just so theory theoretical even if we could travel into the past what would actually mean? what would actually be the results and i just want to kind of open the conversation open the dialogue and maybe get you guys thinking or looking through the same lens I am because the reason why that world line element aka going back and changing an event but the event that you've changed you're only trying to change it because you are the effect of the change so this is basically the principle of cause and effect it is in a lot of scientists view the overriding overarching unrefutable or bypassable law of the universe that every cause must have an effect uh, and every effect must have a cause and now we go over to Final Fantasy 8 which massively bought into that but we didn't really understand it because of how obscure or, or, or just open to interpretation because of course the huge thing with FF8 is uh, when Squall after defeating Ultimecia he then time compresses he gets to go back in time and he meets Adia and he actually tells her about Seed now based on Adia's reaction is she had no clue about Seed she had no clue about a threat of a sorceress from the future 
but Squall from the future tells her about the threat of a sorceress from his future future. So by telling her that's what gave her the idea to form Seed, but of course Squall only knows about Seed because Adia raised him as one and, and created the thing. So the origin of who found a seed is in is now in refute. The element which once gave rise to the cause has actually now become effect and essentially vice versa as well. It, and what this meant with obviously time compression FFA is that the past, present and future can all simultaneously exist, um, but is ultimately unchangeable. And I feel it's mostly done through Thanos and Ultimisha is that they almost have this Greek tragic uh, and this was what um, this was what Kudo pointed out as well. There, there's like a Greek tragic element of a self-fulfilling prophecy, aka both of them believe that they are inevitable. Uh, I think Thanos actually says multiple times he thinks he is inevitable because from their point of view, if they can control the events of, of the future uh, and the present as they are unfolding, then they can pretty much guarantee their rule, their existence. Uh, that's exactly what Old Misha is trying to do. She learns uh, in the future that she gets destroyed in the past or that a, a team called Seed will form to destroy her. And in learning about that, she goes to the past to try to change it. But the only reason why Seed is formed is because they hear about a sorceress from the future coming back to the past to try to change it. So by Ultimisha trying to change her fate, she's ultimately dooming it. She's making it happen. Again, self-fulfilling her own tragic prophecy. And that's exactly what happened with Thanos, because by the events of what he did to try to change the end game no it's the other way around this because it's the avengers who are doing the time travel to avoid it but in him trying to avoid it that's what what happened with with tony the one in 14 million chance that doctor strange spoke about is that in thanos's actions in trying to prevent it it would give tony that one in 14 million chance to do what he did to undo it and essentially that's what old amisha did by coming back he, he, she gave squall that very impossible rare chance for him to actually undo <laughs> fate. Oh my god. I mean, I'm not gonna get bogged down because I'm it's <laughs> it's first thing of the morning, and honestly, when I was driving with my mates back from the cinema, we spent about 45 minutes talking about time. But I'm gonna try to do my best to try to make make it clearer because what I feel with Final Fantasy VIII specifically, as I'm a Final Fantasy channel, this is what most of you might be more prominently interested in. But I'm sure there's a lot of overlap. Is essentially in these movies where time is being used as a concept where you can't change the events of what's already happened, you, you can simply alter them for that world line you were on um, or for a different world line or, or that the ones that you go back are the old world line and the one that you want going forward is, is the new one. So going to this chart, this might make it a bit clearer. So here we have universe A, uh, universe one, universe two, and these steps, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. Uh, so I'm gonna to try to explain this for FF8. So A1 would be a deer founding seed. Now on a linear timeline, this looks like this was the the cause. Adia was the cause of seed being formed. We then move over to B1, which is Squall becoming the seed. So that is the effect. And then C1 would be Squall defeats Ultimisha, time compresses and the credits, the ending with me so far. But it's in this C1 that we learn, no, he's gone back and he's altered events. Again, the same as when the, the Avengers team go back and get Get the stones in a, new, in a universe again where cause and effect uh, can't be changed uh, and, and you're not getting caught in an infinite time loop again because the credits do exist aka even in the avengers there is an after where they're alive they've brought back half the world so, except for tony <laughs> i black widow oh my god that's <laughs> oh god that man. and that fights oh my god that that, that battle scene that battle scene. Oh, except for when captain marvel and her squad of um females <laughs> that was so forced i mean you guys have seen it uh but but essentially it, it creates a new world line this is where uh, ffa and avengers might deviate because time would loop again school would wake up in the infirmary so every time you play ffa if you replay it you could almost imagine like time has reset school's woken back up in the infirmary and that that point of coming into the game it might not necessarily even be the infirmary. It could even be a more significant point. It could just be when Adia first heard about it or when school became a kid. It really could be any event it jumped back to because, again, with Avengers, they can jump back to any point they want. Hell, because we don't have any clarity on it, the singularity point could be with when he gets the eye shard in his arm. No, that, that could be the point. 
which happens. Maybe a deer use some sort of power there. Uh, and that would be a great explanation as to why squirrels are like, what, not even a scar, nothing, and no one ever talks about it again. Little elements like that and this whole thing about you know, how, how FFA got bizarre and wacky, um, and that's why some people thought he was dead, he was living out a dream. It might not be as crazy that it could simply be he's living out in world line with certain events from the previous one haven't come over because there could be so so much alteration and variety in a different world line as we saw at the end uh, of avengers we actually see steve rogers cap get to go and live with his girlfriend again and then he actually becomes old and he's still in the prime world line um but the reason why the prime world line stayed more consistent and, and old steve rogers is still there is because as dr Stray, i should have remembered her name coming to this because they returned the stone uh they returned it back to the prime world line the deviation branches were clipped back to the single one i don't think that happens with eight i think the other world lines still do exist and that's why when the game uh goes past the end credits and we actually see the, the happy ending with school and renoa on the balcony i think there are other world lines previous to that that they were separated on and the reason why i think that is because again even when renoa's face is fading when they go into that middle point which you know that's just after where they go into the middle realm the dark realm that that white void that's after time has been compressed and school's wandering and he, he's alone and he's lost uh, and renoa meets him and then her face kind of fades it's even possible he met a different world line renoa one that the events have almost happened the same for her and for him and neither of them are aware they're both believe that they met in that middle realm and that was real and if they spoke about it on their prime world line that's how they both saw it but it could have been different world lines hence why it was fading and i i the reason why i think it gets that mad is because we do know that squall gets lost in a different world line which potentially indicates he met a different renoa there so when they go into the white void i'm going to throw out a few quotes um they specifically save him before going in you know like selfie says careful guys don't pick the wrong time Quist this even says, make sure you don't fall into a time warp. So pick the right time, don't fall into a time warp. Again, even when, even when the Avengers team are going, even they said, don't miss your, your spots. Don't shoot past your destinations and interfere in areas that you shouldn't, again, because you'll create deviations, you'll create new world lines. I even think that's kind of why Cap didn't want to tell anyone about his girlfriend at the end. You know, when he says, you want to tell us about it, and he said, no, because he has to keep hush hush. He has to live a very basic, simple life, because any kind of information leaked out can cause a paradox and deviate world line cause all kinds of issues so after they go into the white void squall is wandering alone we can easily assume that he's gone into the wrong timeline i think that's almost pretty much guaranteed because he goes to the orphanage and we see a dsa to a teenage school and a younger school things like please return you do not belong here or you're the only school permitted here two quotes from the game so Adia must be referring to her world line and Prime School's non-existence in it. The same as Doctor Strange shit when she says to Bruce that he doesn't belong here and that he's looking for a Strange who's five years. She immediately knew he wasn't from that time. And by that same extension is that he now has the potential to uh, cause issues, cause a deviation, cause a paradox or a looping bootstrap paradox of some sort are your minds absolutely bloody blown right now uh and by all means i could be missing certain elements of, of, of how i'm explaining this i really want you guys to dive in um, but it's certainly just food for thought what actually happened with school's world line because what kudo says is that essentially by uh, the element of time compression again the, the main question is how but because FFA made, made this very clear that you couldn't change events alone, who is actually able to project people's consciousness back in time, so she can essentially time travel, even alter Misha, you cannot change the uh, world timeline. Now, that wasn't exactly true. There was one way for it to happen. That's exactly what alter Misha is in the game for, is to create time compression. Because if you compress time, essentially the future, past and present will become one. They become one and it becomes possible for each of them to be then affected, in a sense. So by killing Ultimisha during this time, she's effectively erased from the future. I'm just gonna be straight from Kudo here. And then when time t uh, decompresses, time goes back to normal as if Ultimisha never existed. Again, so that for, for the Avengers, that would be essentially like Thanos never existed. So they would still keep the time. Crystal Asgard would still keep, uh, keep there, like the, like the Tesseract and stuff. No, other enemies could come and try to go for it. 
but it wouldn't be Thanos. And the reason why this is pretty huge, besides potentially being some very trippy explanations to what, towards what happened at the end uh, uh, with Renoe and the fading and the happy ending and all the other crazy stuff that I won't even go into mention. No, that's why I love FFA. It's just the game that keeps on giving when it comes to theory because it just had so many open-ended plot elements that you could consider. Um, but what it massively brings into question is the concept of free will. Again, a massive plot element through Final Fantasy for, for, throughout its inception. Free will or, or fate. I mean, it, it's the question between free will and fate. If fate is set in stone or if there is a world line event that is looping for a reason that a, a different world line version of yourself. No, but because based on this theory, a younger school and teenage school, they will both go to live the same uh, life as what prime school had and, and they won't be able to deviate from that you know so fate is very much set in stone and that was a huge theme in ff8 as well fate being set in stone Ultimisha's fate being set in stone no matter what she does no matter how she tries to change it even things like the orphanage the way that the group are a, a bunch of orphans and then by some crazy scenario they all end up coming back together yeah you, know, you know like irvine just gets recruited completely separately uh selfie just gets randomly found like in a, in a huge battlefield she actually managed to find and I, I think there's even a selfie's diary it says the chances of finding them was like so crazy slim so it's, it's the fate is bringing them together in such a rigid coincidental crazy way that that it almost borders on that there is no free will. Oh, my mind is melted. And what's really crazy about this is, is because what Kudo wrote, uh, and this is what really lit my brain up to do this video, because I, I recorded these exact words from, from Kudo's page that I have right in front of me. We see this concept of time and connecting different world lines uh, and falling into different wormholes, which is essentially what we could call that white void, you know, falling into a different timeline. Time warp is what Chris uh, Quist has called it. We could be talking about a wormhole. Now, what a wormhole is, essentially theorized by scientists, is that it's a shortcut in the universe to be able to go from point A to B. But some scientists theorize it could be way more than that. It can actually be used to connect different world lines and even time travel between those world lines. So there is a bucket load of theoretical science <laughs> along wormholes. Um, but, but what it says here with Kudo is we see this concept used quite often in science fiction like the film Interstellar, Bill and Ted, and I think even um, I think even Ant Man or, or Thor or someone, um, maybe it was Tony. It even give those exact same examples of movies and TV shows. The Flashpoint is another huge one. The Flash when he creates the Flashpoint, and it's just crazy. It, it just blew my mind wide open on Final Fantasy VIII. Um, really loved that concept in, in Avengers Endgame. Like uh, the, the previous Avengers game. Uh, movie, I thought, I thought bloody hell, the, the, the cast is getting pretty packed, it's getting pretty hefty, the roster, that it feels like they're trying to shoehorn it in at this point. I could not have even imagined a better way for them to have shown almost every single Marvel character, bring them back, um, and yet still keep that core Avengers team, having that core story with a few core characters where it didn't feel drowned out. Yet there was enough representation of all of them. I, I think that the time element of it just carried it perfectly. The way that certain characters were able to go and have you know, emotional uh, moments or reunions or understandings. You know, like uh, Tony with his father Howard or Thor with his mum. Woo! Oh man, it's brilliant. I love it. I love it. It's trippy. It's the fancy. And I want to know what you guys think. If anyone is like a nerd or just love this kind of, of like discussion, go in the comment section below. And I want to know... Uh, any FF8 fanatics, how you guys feel it applies to that, or, or what are the inconsistencies with it, what are the flaws, because I know that, of course, this is such a huge area of, of theoretical science that you know, these entertainment mediums, like games and movies, we're never going to explain it exactly. You know, there's so many questionable elements, you know, especially with, with, with Cap and Steve Rogers having the life he had. Even things like Loki, oh my god, that scene where Loki got his hands on the Tesseract and he poofed off. Um, we don't know where because then in 1970 the Tesseract is there. So we don't actually know where Loki went in that timeline. But, uh, because we can assume by doing that, that world line deviated. So Loki could still be alive on a different world line. And he could be returning for it. And I actually think, I, I think Ginge told me that there's going to be some sort of TV show where Loki actually is coming back. That could be how, it, how it's happening. Oh! Oh! <laughs>
now. Yeah. There we go, guys. A crazy non-slept ramble in how time works in these games and the potential implications, I feel like the, the cause and effect element of, of Squall creating his own effect, even though he also becomes the cause, the, that element happens because of the world line. The, the, essentially, the new world line itself becomes the cause, and the, uh, the moment in the past becomes the effect. And that's a really trippy element to get your mind around, especially because us three-dimensional beings, we see time as, as, as such a linear, uh, such a linear path, uh, and a cause coming before the effect. Well, an effect coming before a cause. Fuck me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It is too much for our meager human brains, or at least mine, to consider. And this is where we start getting into the quantum realm. And I feel like if I dig deep enough into this, and we get into the flow into this conversation, that some of those really trippy elements of FF8 could actually be... They explained away. I don't know, what the hell was Square Enix thinking with that ending? I, I, I always trip balls when I think about, you know, why even though his face was, was like melting uh, and merging. I don't know, uh, maybe it was just many world lines of school's memories just, just fuzzing. Or, or just a world line of that Renoa that he wasn't with, but he thought he was, but he wasn't. But he kind of does. But then does any of it actually matter? Because are, are all of those world lines happening? Are, are all 14 million events that Doctor Strange viewed actually still in a, an event happening? So is Ultimisha ultimately winning on many other world lines and, and none of it actually matters and we're just seeing the one world line where we are the heroes, but in all the others we are the losers. Because d does time compress on one, one world line or, or many world lines or... Oh, what world line am I on right now? Is there a world line where I actually understand any of this shit? <laughs> Is there a world line where I have 100k subs? I don't know. Let's try to get me out there on this one, please. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Feel free to nerd out in the conversation below. Dig those theoretical elbows right in. We're talking singularities, causalities, bootstrap paradox realities, and and and. Self-consistency principles. <laughs> Until the next video, guys. <laughs> Good night.